information process processing so as stated we are going to take a look at the information process of processing which is really the foundation information process because it is involved in all the other information processes okay and we'll start by explaining this through looking at its definition so essentially processing is the mechanical transformation the processing of data using the system's processes to create a new value now your systems processes are chugging along the whole time in an information system at every level they're actually conducting the processes of the systems hence why they're called information processes okay but when data is being transformed okay mechanically so we're talking about the hardware involved to do this we are talking about processing so we'll illustrate some examples of processing right now okay so Think of a calculator. When you're calculating totals, that's a process. Making the values added together and giving a solution, that's a process, okay? Now, we've talked about this before, about how it can be simply one plus one equals two, okay? That's a calculation. But then as we've, well, we've said, the most powerful computers, the supercomputers in the world, the most expensive ones are weather prediction systems, okay? And they are calculating totals based on humidity, temperature, historical values, and combining them all together in order to predict future weather. And that's all calculation too. Okay, and obviously it is all bound by the processes of those supercomputers. Filtering emails, okay, the actual organizing them in a specific order based on date, what you've viewed and what you haven't done, what's spam and all that, that's your processes in action, okay, for your emails. Okay, modifying image pixels, changing their colors, changing their size, changing the resolution, okay, all of that is an actual process. We're doing something to the pixels where they are being changed and thus it is a process modifying audio waves okay when you've actually put audio into the system and then you're increasing the actual pitch in certain areas you're adjusting how many times a sample is being taken from the wave okay that is a process and then finally encoding video data okay actually uh, processing the data from a raw format and then actually publishing that video okay so that all your scenes are put together as one movie is a process okay so as you can see processes take place all the time and I've really tried to highlight here in the examples all the different media types how they can actually be processed here okay so we'll talk about some of the information technology related to processing now on the hardware side we're really highlighting two specific pieces of hardware that actually work together the first one is random access memory now you don't think of that straight away for processing okay because um, obviously it's memory okay and it plays a role in the memory so I'll highlight the second one now the central processing unit or other processes okay and then we'll talk about the relationship between the CPU and the RAM as an important part of processing. Now, firstly, with these two separate things, RAM obviously needs to have a large capacity, okay? Because obviously we have multi-processing systems, especially in the information system that needs lots of things processed at one. RAM is the memory. So RAM needs to be able to keep all these different files and different programs open and live on the screen. That is the importance of RAM, okay? It is the memory, okay? So everything is stored in RAM that is live on your system at the time. The CPU, and as it says here, it needs to be fast along with the other processes, is the actual brain that does the thinking, okay? And the relationship between the RAM and the CPU is what's known as the fetch-execute cycle, okay? Things are stored in RAM that are live, and then RAM then sends things, okay, one by one at a time to the CPU for processing, okay? The CPU then does the calculations, does the changes to the data, okay, turn it into information, Okay, and then once that is complete, it sends it back into RAM for you to view the results, okay? So that is the cycle between RAM and the CPU. RAM is the memory for all the live data, everything's been acted on the time, and then it sends it to the CPU for processing. Okay, once the CPU processes it, it sends it back to RAM where you see its results, okay? Then we click saved and it goes off to storing and retrieving, okay, and stored in a secondary location such as your hard drive. So understand the relationship between these two and its attributes is paramount in an information system because really this is where our power is okay there's nothing worse than a laggy system or a laggy app okay and that would be because you have either a slow processor or not enough ram to support it okay and if we're not getting results back in a timely manner okay or we're getting bad frame rates or anything like that your system's not going to work people aren't going to like using your system okay when you guys go out and buy a computer you'd be looking at these two attributes of the actual system here so just really want to highlight the importance of those two pieces of hardware then on the software side, okay, we'll just look at three elements quickly, but as I said, processes is involved everywhere. Okay, firstly is the importance of the operating system. Okay, the operating system has actual uh, features in it related to memory management, 
CPU time, okay, are being allocated to certain uh, software within the system. Okay, so um, this part of the operating system known as the kernel delegates what actual software gets certain amount of memory allocated to them from RAM. It also says how much CPU usage is going to be used for processing different things at a time. So the operating system is paramount in relation to processing because obviously the operating system manages all hardware on the system. Okay, and at the center of this is the operating system's kernel. Okay, and obviously things can be adjusted by the user for how much actual RAM is being used for certain apps and so on and what runs in the background. Okay, but Basically, the user only sees one side. It's the CPU's job to manage everything on the back end of the components of the system, things that we don't need to worry about. Okay, and hence why the kernel's in charge of that. Okay. Next, with actual software, okay, we're talking about calculators, different types of calculators for processing numbers. Okay, but these calculators, as we said, don't aren't always the same sort of, you know, press your numbers, whatever. Okay, we can obviously do more complex formulas and things such as spread cheat calculations and obviously build custom software for more complex actual calculations such as weather prediction and then finally I just want to mention authoring software now I've written here that authoring software is actually manipulating multimedia that's because it can allow us to manipulate all the different media types text image audio animation video okay individually with these actual processes outlined in the examples modifying image pixels modifying audio waves encoding video data but authoring software some of authoring software can allow us to combine these together to make larger multimedia packages okay and obviously these things will have mammoth file sizes because they they haven't been compressed yet because we're working on them so that's just to show and an example where the process is under a lot of stress, okay, because managing large file sizes and uh, these complex minute parts, okay, of these big actual uh, software applications that we're making, okay, is quite, takes quite a toll on both RAM and the CPU. Okay, and hence, once again, while well, we need a large capacity of RAM and a fast processor to do so, I wouldn't be able to make these computers if I had these actual videos if I had laggy RAM, okay, that allowed my video to stutter while making. In fact, I've invested in getting a good system, okay, that it makes it so that my videos are as smooth as possible. You go watch some of my older videos where I, was, I had a, obviously not as good of a computer, you can actually see the poorer frame rate, the lag in what I'm talking and all that stuff from my videos from a few years ago. Okay, that's because I've got a better system now with better RAM, okay, and video video processing does consume a lot of RAM, okay, and does require a lot of processing to encode the video. So I hope this video has introduced you to the information processor processing, that it is a foundation of all the information process that allows everything to work, okay. I know I gibbered on quite a lot about RAM and the CPU, but they really are paramount in relation to the information uh, process of processing. So I hope you understand its importance now.